What is going on y'all and welcome back to the Fit Men Cook Kitchen. Today we are getting our hands really dirty down and busy in the kitchen uh, cooking up some seafood. That's right, we are talking about how to cook seafood in bulk for meal prep. I think the norm for everyone out there is just to season up your fish, put it onto a pan and stick it in the oven and then you're done. Don't get me wrong, there are tons of ways out there to cook seafood for meal prep, but when we're talking about cooking things in bulk, we are trying to get in and out of the kitchen as quickly as possible. So because seafood is one of those things that I feel like people have generally mastered or got their own rhythm down, I'm gonna spend the bulk of today's video answering some frequently asked questions when it comes to seafood, Plus, of course, you know I'm gonna share some of my favorite ways to cook seafood in bulk for prep. All right, we got a lot of stuff to cover today, so let's roll up our sleeves. It's, <laughs> okay, I roll up our sleeves, I did my hands like this. So let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started. <laughs> Before we hop into today's video when it comes to seafood, I wanna make three quick points. Number one, buy fresh seafood over frozen seafood whenever possible. Back in the day when I first started out on my journey, I would go to Walmart and I would buy the $11 blue box of frozen tilapia. What I began to notice was that with the frozen fish, it began to break apart much easier and there wasn't a lot of flavor to it. So it's my own personal preference to buy uh, fresh over frozen whenever possible. We don't really think about this, but fish goes bad pretty quickly and because of that it's often offered at a discount at our supermarkets whenever you buy it fresh. If you're not eating seafood that week and you still see it on sale and it's fresh, I would recommend just going ahead and buying it anyway and then freezing it and that way you have your own fresh frozen um, seafood that you can enjoy whenever you're ready. Frozen foods, in particular proteins, tend to hold a lot of water. So once you defrost the fish, you're gonna wanna lay out some paper towels and place the fish on the paper towels and let a lot of that water come out of it. So again, whenever possible, buy fresh fish, but if you can't, frozen is a viable option, but just follow those steps. Number two deals with storage. Cooked fish or cooked seafood can remain fresh in the fridge for about three days. Now, it's my own personal preference not to allow anything, any cooked seafood over two days in my fridge because I'm very sensitive to, to smells and so I just think it kind of smells funny. So anything that I'm not gonna eat within two days, I'm going to freeze. The third point I wanna make is about wild fish versus farmed fish. Now, this is a huge debate right now within the healthy eating community. Now scientifically, there is no easy answer to this, so I just can't tell you yes or no, um, because I think there are pros and cons on both sides, and it genuinely does come down to a personal preference. Nutritionally, whenever you're looking at the wild versus the farm fish, they are pretty much equivalent. Um, because of the advancements of the feeds that they've been able to give the farm fish. So, since they're both the same nutritionally, it really comes down to a personal preference with things that you have to consider, such as the environmental impact, how the fish are harvested, food safety, um, and also just the bottom line, which is your cost. A big question I get is, is farmed fish safe? And this question arise because of this study that was done, I think it was back in 2004, early 2000s, whereby they showed um, that farm fish had a statistically significantly higher number of contaminants than the wild caught fish. However, whenever you dive into that statistic, what you'll find is that even though they were higher in contaminants, the number of contaminants in the um, farm fish was still lower than the amount deemed to be dangerous for human consumption. So technically, the fish is still deemed safe to eat. When it comes to the topic of environmental impact, many people have concerns about the way that wild caught fish are harvested. There are oftentimes large machines that will disrupt the surrounding ecosystem and, and, and pollute the surrounding environment. And so that is a huge concern for many people. This is not a blanket statement to say that all wild caught fish are harvested in, in unsustainable ways and that are negatively impacting the environment, um, but it is a concern for many people. And of course, the bottom line here is cost. Oftentimes, farm fish is offered at much cheaper prices than the wild caught fish. And so many people are forced to make that decision um, based off of their budget. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. Now I wanna deal with some of the most common types of fish for meal prep, the fatty fish like salmon versus the white fish, the lean fish like cod, orange roughy, and tilapia. 
First up is salmon. This is a beautiful wild caught piece of salmon right here. Omega-3 fatty acids is probably one of the main reasons why people like to eat seafood, particularly salmon, because salmon is really rich in it. Wild salmon gets the omega-3 fatty acids from feeding off the algae and the plankton, whereas the farm-raised salmon get it from the feed. For many of the feeds, they are developing them now with a little bit less fish meal and much more um, fish oil in order to make sure that they have enough of the omega-3 fatty acids in them. So what you'll find is that on average, the farm-raised fish um, are fattier, but the wild-caught salmon have more iron, calcium, and potassium. Now with that stuff out of the way, let's get down to cooking the salmon. I always hear from people that salmon is too fishy, I hate salmon. This is the reason why. Don't overcook your salmon. Did you know that the longer you cook salmon, the fishier it becomes? The fat content in the salmon allows it to tolerate a lot more heat without drying out. So now I cook it at about 420 degrees for no more than 15 minutes and it's perfect. I will say that that frozen packaged salmon is a little bit fishier on average in my experience. Medium rare is the best. We want nice, pink, moist, opaque center. And can you eat the skin off of salmon? I think it's a personal preference. I personally love to eat the skin off the salmon, especially whenever I cook it in a skillet and get it nice and crispy. But many people don't like to eat it because of the, the contaminants. If salmon are swimming around in contaminated water or they're feeding off of things that are contaminated, then the toxins build up in the skin and in the fat of that salmon. Now what you can do is that after you bake it, just slice off the skin and it'd be just fine. Marinating is probably the best way to get rid of any fishy flavor from any fish, particularly the oily fish like salmon. So here are two of my favorite ways for salmon meal prep. For the first salmon recipe, we're gonna make an easy marinade with fresh orange juice or lemon or lime, low sodium soy, sriracha for a little heat, and some ginger. Now stir it all up, then pour it in a zip plastic bag then add the salmon filet. Close it tight and marinate for at least 30 minutes or overnight to lock in the flavor. For the other filet, we're gonna add olive oil, smoked paprika, cumin, and pepper. Rub in the seasonings and cook it immediately. Add the filets to a baking sheet with parchment paper or foil to prevent sticking. Add orange slices, a little pepper, and the remaining sauce to the marinated filet. Bake for 10 to 12 minutes at 420. Add red pepper to the rub filet and garnish with cilantro and lemon. And to the orange marinated filet, garnish with fresh mint to boost those flavors. Next up is whitefish. I got some cod in this hand and some orange roughy in this one. Cod is among the lightest tasting and one of the most affordable fish out there when it comes to buying seafood in bulk for meal prep. But orange roughy is also an amazing viable option, but oftentimes people have an adverse reaction to eating orange roughy like myself. Orange roughy is a very buttery and very waxy type of fish. It's called an escalar. At the risk of oversimplifying this and TMI, Oftentimes our bodies can't digest the fat and waxes in escalar, so what we'll do is we will extract the fat and then we will excrete it. So basically I'm talking about anal leakage. So I was eating orange roughy for about two weeks straight. When I went to the gym on this particular day, I was sweating more so than usual from the waist down. Fast forward to that night and then wake, going to bed and then waking up in the morning time, there was a huge stain where my butt was um, that looked like vegetable oil. And let me tell you what, this was not this is not the best thing for a relationship, but it's also a good test to see if you're in a relationship with the right person. This is a very common um, side effect and reaction for people whenever they eat escalars. When it comes to cooking um, white fish or lean fish, it doesn't take that long because it's super lean. So I like to cook it on lower temperatures at around 400 and for the same amount of time, about 15 minutes or so. Definitely no more than 20 minutes because I don't want to dry out the fish. Oftentimes I like to spray it with a little bit of olive oil and then add in my spices and herbs to it so that way it remains moist and flaky um, during the baking process. Now here are a few ways I like to prepare white fish. I love marinating with Greek yogurt because it helps secure moistness, especially to lean proteins that tend to be dry. Plus, it's an extra boost of protein. Add Greek yogurt to a plastic bag, then add garlic, fresh dill, lemon, and pepper. 
Add the fillets, secure the bag with no air, and gently mash and mix it together. Marinate for at least 30 minutes. Add the fillets to a baking sheet or baking rack, then bake for 12 to 15 minutes at 400. Garnish with pepper, dill, and lemon. For the orange roughy, whisk one egg in a bowl, then select your favorite nut. I'll be using pecans because they're much easier to crush up. Use a mallet or a spoon and mash the pecans into pieces. Add a dash of panko, cumin, and garlic. Mix it together. Dip the fish in the egg, and then the pecan mixture. Place the filet on a baking sheet or baking rack and bake for 15 minutes at 400. Garnish with parsley and lemon. That's it for today's video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. And I hope that I answered some of your questions when it comes to cooking seafood in bulk. If you like videos like this, I want you to smash that like button below. And I also want you to take just a few seconds out to share your favorite way to prep white fish. I cannot tell you um, how helpful comment sections are. People like to search the comments and they look for suggestions like yours. They look for user reviews. If you think about it, that's one of the main reasons why we love some of these online channels like Amazon so much because of the customer reviews. So I want you all just to take a few seconds out to share your meal prep tips when it comes to prepping seafood in bulk so that way we can all learn and grow together. All right, y'all, I wanna thank y'all for watching. Until next time, keep it healthy, but of course, never ever boring. Ooh! Bye.